Engineering often creates things beyond our wildest dreams. When we think of huge structures, we might picture tall skyscrapers or massive bridges. But there's another amazing type of engineering. Giant moving machines that are bigger and more powerful than we expect. These aren't still structures. They are enormous moving things, like giant excavators that reshape the land, super heavy transporters for space exploration, and floating factories as big as small towns operating in rough seas. We'll look at how three famous modern engineering marvels were created. Bagger 293, the world's largest bucket wheel excavator working in Germany. NASA Crawler Transporter, the heaviest land vehicle moving giant rockets in Florida. Prelude. FLNG, the world's first and largest floating liquefied natural gas facility off the coast of Australia. By exploring these, we'll see the complex journey from figuring out a basic need to building massive operational systems that have a big impact worldwide. Every giant engineering project starts for a reason. Take Bagger 293. It was needed because Germany's lignite, brown coal mining industry, had a problem. To get to the coal buried deep underground, a thick layer of soil, overburden, had to be removed. The job was so huge that old digging methods weren't efficient or cheap enough. They needed a radical solution to dig and move extreme amounts of material continuously. This need led to the idea of a giant bucket wheel excavator. Across the Atlantic, NASA faced a different but equally tricky logistics challenge. The US space program involved incredibly large rockets like the famous Saturn V, the Space Shuttle, and now the Space Launch System, SLS. These rockets, along with their mobile launch platforms, needed to be moved safely, stably, and precisely from the Vehicle Assembly Building, VAEA, to the launch pad several kilometers away. Because the cargo was priceless and sensitive to shaking, they needed a super reliable land transport system. This basic need led to the development of the NASA Crawler Transporter. Meanwhile, off the coast of Western Australia, an energy company faced a problem. Rich natural gas reserves were located far from land. Building hundreds of kilometers of underwater pipelines to processing plants on shore was too expensive and technically difficult. The innovative solution was the Prelude FLNG, floating liquefied natural gas concept. The revolutionary idea was to put the entire gas liquefaction process, extraction, purification, supercooling, storage, and transfer, onto one massive floating structure that could be permanently anchored right above the gas field. These specific needs were then turned into basic design goals, performance targets, and strict operational requirements. The Bagger 293 design had to prioritize digging and handling massive amounts of material. The Crawler Transporter design focused on moving extremely slowly, but with incredible platform stability, to handle ultra-heavy and sensitive loads. The Prelude FLNG design faced double challenges, fitting a complex LNG production process into a limited space in a corrosive and dynamic sea environment, while ensuring the floating structure remained stable in extreme weather. Before engineers even started drawing detailed plans, a lot of preparation work was essential. This wasn't just brainstorming, it involved deep analysis, checking if the project was technically and financially possible, looking into environmental and legal rules, assessing potential risks and how to manage them, involving stakeholders, and considering social and environmental impacts. Understanding the related industry processes was key. This initial phase aimed to clearly define the project's goals and limits, guiding all future design and manufacturing decisions. Once the needs and requirements were clear, engineers started creating initial conceptual designs. This was a creative exploration stage involving technical sketches, process flow diagrams, and basic 3D digital models using computer-aided design CAD software. Different concepts were compared against the set criteria quickly eliminating impractical ideas or those with major flaws. From the chosen concepts, the process moved to detailed engineering and design. Here, abstract ideas became concrete, measurable technical plans. Teams of engineers from different fields, mechanical, structural, electrical, materials, etc., worked together to produce highly precise engineering drawings, digital blueprints, and detailed technical specifications for every single part, from the smallest bolt to the largest steel structure. Complex mathematical calculations and advanced computer simulations were central. Numerical methods like finite element analysis, FEA, were used extensively. 
FEA helps engineers predict how the machine's structure will react to extreme operational loads, vibrations, heat, and other physical effects. Stress distribution, potential material fatigue, structural deformation, and overall stability were simulated under various scenarios to check the design's integrity and safety. Other aspects like operational efficiency, material flow analysis for the bagger, computational fluid dynamics, CFD, for prelude, and complex interactions between subsystems were modeled and analyzed in depth. Designing machines on such a colossal scale presents fundamentally different engineering challenges. Managing static and dynamic loads, reaching thousands or even millions of kilograms is the core problem. Ensuring structural stability to prevent catastrophic failures like tipping over or collapsing requires careful calculations and adequate safety factors. Thermal expansion and contraction, often negligible on a smaller scale, become significant factors in massive metal structures, hundreds of meters long, and must be accounted for in joint designs and manufacturing tolerances. The extreme dimensions of Bagger 293, 96 meters high, 225 meters long, demanded a structure that was strong yet optimally lightweight. The crawler transporter had to support 8,165 tons with absolute stability, achieved through a sophisticated hydraulic jacking, equalization, and leveling JEL system. Prelude FLNG needed to be stable in the open sea while resisting extreme environmental forces and ensuring the integrity of the process facilities on top. These challenges went beyond pure technical aspects, involving complex project management, resource allocation, strict safety protocols, and managing schedule and cost risks. The reliability and long life of any large-scale machine depend on careful and technically justified material selection. This decision is crucial because materials determine not only the machine's strength and durability, but also its total weight, resistance to the operating environment, ease of manufacturing, and the project's economic feasibility. Material engineers must thoroughly evaluate a wide range of material properties. Mechanical properties. Tensile strength, compressive strength, stiffness, elastic modulus, toughness, ability to absorb energy before breaking, and fatigue resistance, ability to withstand repeated loads without failing, are key considerations. Physical properties, density, thermal conductivity, and coefficient of thermal expansion are also important. Chemical properties. These determine how the material interacts with its environment, especially corrosion resistance, abrasion, wear, resistance, and chemical reactivity. Each giant machine has specific material requirements based on its function and operating environment. Bagger 293, constantly digging and moving abrasive material, needs high-grade steel with superior wear resistance for its bucket wheel, buckets, and conveyor systems. Its boom and counterweight structures also rely on high-strength steel. The NASA Crawler Transporter, bearing immense concentrated loads, requires materials with extreme compressive strength and fatigue resistance for its track shoes and support frame. Prelude FLNG Designed to operate for at least 25 years exposed to corrosive seawater and marine atmosphere, heavily relies on extensive use of stainless steel, specifically duplex stainless steel, combining austenitic and ferritic microstructures for an optimal balance of strength, toughness, and corrosion resistance, especially against pitting and crevice corrosion in high chloride environments, was the primary choice for many critical components. Over 260,000 tons of steel, much of it this special type, were used in Prelude's construction. Using high-strength, low-alloy HSLA steels and other advanced metal alloys is common practice. These materials are metallurgically engineered to withstand extreme stress while minimizing structural weight, a critical factor for efficiency and stability. Composite materials like carbon fiber reinforced polymers, CFRP, are also starting to be used in specific components where weight reduction is a top priority, although cost remains a limiting factor. Given the massive scale and critical applications of these machines, where material failure could be catastrophic, strict quality control QC, systems during material selection and manufacturing are absolutely essential. Once the design is approved and raw materials are selected, the next challenge is transforming these raw materials into the precise components that will form the giant machine's structure. Given the size and complexity, specialized large-scale manufacturing techniques are needed. Metal casting 
a fundamental method for producing large metal components with complex shapes. Metal is melted in high temperature furnaces, then poured into molds designed in the final shape. After cooling and solidifying, the mold is removed. Sand casting is the most versatile and economical technique for very large components with moderate complexity, like the Bagger 293's bucket wheel buckets or segments of the Prelude FLNG hull. For higher precision, methods like permanent mold casting or investment casting can be used, though they are limited to smaller scales. The crawler transporter's track shoes, needing strength and wear resistance, were likely also made through casting. Heavy forging. For critical components requiring superior internal strength, high impact resistance, and significant fatigue resistance, forging is the top choice. Unlike casting, forging shapes metal in its solid state using massive compressive forces from giant hydraulic hammers or thousand-ton presses on heated raw material. This process refines the metal's internal microstructure, resulting in components much stronger and tougher than cast ones. The main techniques are open-die forging for simple shapes like shafts or beams and closed-die forging, vital components like main drive shafts, large transmission gears, and critical structural support elements in all three case study machines likely benefited from heavy forging. Precision machining. Neither casting nor forging usually produces the required dimensional accuracy and final surface quality. Therefore, precision machining is an essential follow-up step. Rough components, cast or forged, are machined using large-scale computer numerical control, CNC machine tools, milling machines, lathes, drilling machines, grinders, and multi-axis machining centers. These CNC machines are computer controlled to move cutting tools precisely, removing excess material until the final shape and size are achieved with very tight tolerances, often in micrometers. Critical interface areas, complex moving parts, bearings, gears, and ceiling surfaces on Bagger 293, the crawler transporter, and Prelude FLNG all require precision machining to ensure proper assembly fit, smooth function, and reliable operation. The Bagger's bucket wheel bearing seats, the crawler's steering mechanisms, and components of Prelude's turret mooring system demand extremely high machining accuracy. Machining these super large components has its own challenges, like limited machine workspace, potential distortion from self-weight or heat, and the need for special cutting tools and clamping systems. After thousands of individual components, from small bolts to 100 ton steel structures are manufactured in various parts of the world, the next challenge is integrating them into a single, functional giant machine. This assembly phase and the associated logistics management are often the most complex and critical stages. Modular assembly strategy. This approach is common, especially for super large projects like Prelude FLNG. The machine is designed and built in smaller functional or structural units, modules in specialized fabrication facilities, shipyards, modular fabrication yards, under controlled conditions. These modules, hull segments, process units, power plants, are assembled, and sometimes even partially tested, pre-commissioning, before being transported to the final installation site. This approach speeds up the schedule, parallel fabrication with site preparation, improves quality, controlled environment, and enhances safety, reduces risky work at the final site. The construction of Prelude, FLNG, is a perfect example. The hull and process modules were built in South Korea before being towed thousands of kilometers to Australia. Colossal transport logistics. Moving these giant components is a logistical operation requiring meticulous planning. Land transport might need special multi-axle heavy haul vehicles, escorts, road closures, bridge capacity analysis, and even temporary infrastructure. Water transport using barges or specialized heavy lift vessels, HLVS, is often the choice for long distances or super large components. Detailed route planning, complex permits, lifting methods, and load securing lashing are crucial. The sea journey of Prelude, FLNG, from Korea to Australia was one of the longest and heaviest ocean towage operations in history. Final site assembly. Combining modules or assembling individual components at the operational site presents significant challenges. Special heavy lifting equipment is needed, especially supercapacity cranes, hundreds to thousands of tons. Placing massive components precisely requires highly skilled operators and perfect team coordination. 
Precise alignment between components is critical. Millimeter deviations can be disastrous. Precision measurement instruments, laser trackers, theodolites, are used for verification. Once fitted, components are permanently joined through extensive welding by qualified welders or using thousands of high-strength bolts tightened to specific torque specifications. Bagger 293 and the NASA Crawler Transporter were largely assembled directly at their operating sites, Garsweiler Mine and Kennedy Space Center, from shipped components. Logistics management at the construction site itself is also complex, ensuring material flow, safe accessibility, resource management, and effective communication across a vast and hazardous project area.